two, one. Which square? Which square? Which side? This right side. Right? I was going to scratch this side. That is signal. signal what side? Got that. it. Okay, so, so that means that yeah, means we're that good means to go. We're good to go. Seamless, seamless start for the Got show. It. So we're not pointing. So anything. when are we? When are we going? Now. Ah, ah, ah! <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, today is hosted by me, obviously, because it's my podcast and me, me and Jack's podcast. <laughs> um, and George is our guest every week, which every is good. Week. But um, <laughs> welcome, guys. How's it going? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, all good. Yeah. That's How are you? Haircut. All right, I'm, I'm actually drinking out of a George mug today. Why, why are you drinking out of my mug? Because <laughs> I left mine outside. <laughs> look, how, look how handsome I am. Look at this. Oh, there once was a day where I was leaving. Go back, go back to the deadlift, man. Titus white top. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Sally's t-shirt, I think. Or it was you looked Turkish in that. You looked yeah, Turkish yeah. in that one. Like a yeah. Turkish oh, was, that, that was his extra Turkish day, actually. It's I remember extremely it offensive well. to Iraqi people. But there's mm. the older... I mean, that's why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. that deadlift. Yeah, that was, you know... Yeah, that was a special... Was them, you know what? Them, trousers, them shorts are really low on your belly. That's what I like the most. Yeah, yeah. I mean... To be honest, it's, I wasn't wearing shorts. I was just wearing like a makeshift belt. You know, one of those corset things that women get, but yeah. like the ones that tuck under. Yeah, they get your linen Alba. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's coming back, the Alba. It's nearly there. Oh, don't. Jackie's there. already talking about it all the time. Since he's, uh, every time after he wrestles with men in some <laughs> weird padded room, he comes back and then tells me about his linen Alba. But we don't. You've been doing much up. But we don't actually wrestle with men, remember, because we're social distancing, which is practice. Oh, fine. yes. <laughs> you don't you, <laughs> remember. You, you wrestle shadow for wrestling. Yeah, we're, don't just, you? We're, just, we're just practicing the technique. Sha- shadow okay. jujitsu. You know? So I, I go like this and then you all fall down. Yeah, and yeah. then like. Yeah. Yeah. And then, it's and then, like them special arts. That's right. And if they do that, <laughs> really, if they do that really quickly, I go, oh. <laughs> just tap. <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah. I have got Lena since doing jiu-jitsu. Yes, I have started jiu-jitsu, Jack, and I'm pretty terrible at it, if I'm honest. You know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird because you, you barely know that he does it because he only talks about it all the time. I do talk about it too much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, yeah, no, we did say because you came in your dressing gown into Simon's gym. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah that's what it was, his dressing yeah, yeah, gown. <laughs> yeah. And then he yeah. locked me out. He locked me out of the gym, yeah. literally. Yeah. And at the time, I was just knocking, going, let me in. When there's another door, I could have just... Yeah, <laughs> I just, about that. Yeah, I could have just you, you were too jujitsu up at that yeah, point. You think about yeah. the lower door? I'd been choked too much that day. Um, yeah, arm barred. You know, basically just beaten up. Yeah, but you know, yeah. I'm getting demasculine. I'm, I'm getting better slowly. Demasculine. Yeah, but yeah. anyway, back to the subject. There is no subject, but there is going to be now. Um, we're talking about possibly fails in diets because diets I know we talked the other week on why people fail to progress and why they fail to see results but um, going back to the hardest point of all this which I find uh, for my clients is nutrition because much like um, much like a crackhead you know trying to stop crack but having a little bit of it every day would be really hard and trying to control your nutrition when you're so addicted to foods and the feelings that you get from them and then having them every every day but only in smaller amounts it's it's a hard challenge because the gym is only a small portion of the week so i thought we would give some um give our thoughts on some of the the things that we see people struggle with the most and then talk about then things like how we could then change that and make it a lot better or give them some ideas and tips as to what we think is the best possible fix for those scenarios um because again like i said nutrition is 24 7 Weight training might only be, or resistance training might only be three hours a week and cardio, little bits in between that. So the food side is definitely the most difficult side. Would you agree or not? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Definitely, you know. Mm. So. I think the difficulty is is um, people have built the habits of the, the foods that they eat over the course of their lives. They've been influenced yeah. by their families growing up um, as the types of, you know, the typical... It's Friday, we're going to have fish and chips, um, Sunday roasts, you know, uh, we were talking about a, a habitual sort habitual, of like yeah, absolutely, cultural yeah. thing. Yeah, so I think the real difficulty is, 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 is getting people to change those lifelong uh, habits yeah. that they've created. And I think you're yeah. right. I think sometimes we, we go for the approach of um, steady changes, 
you know, make one change here, one change there. But you're right, it is like, you know, giving someone a little bit of what they like and kind of the heavens kind of open at that point. And it's, it's, yeah. it's finding that balance between the people who need to make very small changes and the people who, who actually yeah. need to go. I think all or nothing is something that we try and get away from, isn't it? You know, um, not yeah. having any, you know, it, it, it has its place though. It has it its place has with its some place, people. Yeah. If, you're, if you're a hedonic, oh, emotional overeater, it seems to be, you know, staying away from certain things. But we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Um, yeah. So I want to pose a question. What would be the number one thing that you think people struggle with when it comes to diet? What's the, what's the, the hardest thing that you find your clients struggle with when it comes to diet? Uh, do you want to go first, Jack? Yeah, for me, the biggest thing I see people do is restrict tons during the week to then feel they're okay to smash out what they want to eat on the weekend. And yeah. they may even be doing it within their weekly calorie target, whatever that may be, but they One restrict- calorie a week? Yeah, they restrict, so like, then they just find it miserable, so then it's not sustainable for them because for five days out of seven, they're having a rubbish time, they're not eating what they want to eat, they're reducing so much, but then on the weekends, they go out and splurge. And I think that sort of look out on how, in order to organize your nutrition, is just it's not going to last a long time. You're not going to be able to do it week on, week out. Maybe if you've got good motivation and willpower for six weeks before a wedding or something, you'll be okay. But yeah. if it's something you want to be able to continually do and be able to have, a, like you say, especially with people that emotionally eat, want to have a good relationship with food, then sorting it out where you can have that balance where you know during the week this is your calorie target you can have that little bit of brownie or whatever it is on that day and it doesn't matter you don't have to think about it because you know oh, i'm still under for the week whereas the main pitfall is taking it right back throughout the week and then on the weekend splurging out yeah it's, it seems to be that i know we've probably all read about it but that massive calorie restriction which leads the in, intense overfeeding then because they're they're so hungry by the point that they're ready to let go and when they let mm. go it's too hard to control they really, whereas like yeah, i think yeah. we've talked about it before where in rather than being like oh, i'm gonna eat 600 calories for four or five days and then they go to have let's say a refeed but then it gets out of control and they end up having two to three thousand calories for three days in a row which then net, net profit they're back into the either balance in the calories or they're over again, which means they lose nothing or possibly. Yeah, I, you know, I would say that two, three thousand calories is generous. Often, is no, no, and that's easy. More, I mean, come know, on, that's easy. Yeah, but then yeah. they, you know, that instead of like you were saying there is instead of having you know, fourteen, fifteen on the calories for five days, and then taking it up to two thousand calories for two days. Yeah, you know, in that way, and then never having the need. They feel like they have to splurge because yeah. they haven't felt so restricted. Yeah, you don't, want, you don't want people getting to the end of the week desperate for more food. Do you yeah. know? And suddenly they think, oh, I can't wait to have, and then like they said, the heavens open. Um, I agree. I think um, another thing that I find is um, organization, it, organizing yeah. what they, you know, looking at the foods that they need to eat, how much they need to be eating. And then um, we've lost Jack, by the way, everyone. Um, and um, organizing their meals for the week. And it doesn't have to be what we do, Simon, where we basically cook our lunches for, the re for the, our whole week. It just needs to be, hey, I've got these t uh, ingredients set for these meals for the course of the week. And you can either batch cook or you could cook as you go, but have your ingredients there. If you don't have your ingredients there, what's gonna happen? The first thing I've, that happens is you go for the easiest thing, the easiest option, which is usually a fairly high calorie. Yeah. Now you Especially can, when you leave it to the point where you're actually hungry. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's, you come back from work, you're tired, you're hungry. You haven't organized the, the meal that you'll prep for that night. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're getting there thinking, welcome back, Jack. You're getting there thinking, I'm starving. I'm just going to have that. I'm going to put that in the microwave. I'm just going to have that. And then I might just have some crisps. Okay, I'll get back on it tomorrow. That's fine if you do that once, if you're not organized once. Now, if you do, if you haven't set a plan in your head, even as just a basic one of, of your meals for the week, then 
three or four of those are going to be detrimental to your to, to what you're trying to achieve. So um, yeah, I think organization having a plan of what you're going to be eating. Yeah. Um, I mean, that even it even goes like you don't even uh, on the organisational thing. It's not even having to be like oh, I'm going to prep meals because not everybody's at that. But even if you buy meals out, just having an, a plan of where you're going to buy your food sometimes helps. You know what I mean? Just like all right, so where I work in this area, what's the shops around me? Right, what's the options in these mm-hmm. shops? Right, let me get me so like let me get myself five different choices of lunches that are all around the same calorie sort of intake and then you then set yourself up for success because you've now been like right so i've got five choices every day that i can have yeah for me. It's like you know most of us like we're like robots we don't we sort of just eat generally the same sort of foods all the time but having five different options would just mean that you don't fall off so easily and you've got choice there you know if you don't quite fancy that type of meal and um, rather than do some find it that some people make lunches and then by day three you eat the same thing they're so bored that they go and eat something ridiculous or whatever but it, the organization goes for either planning your meals in the week or planning your meals when you're out it just doesn't yeah. take as much effort i think but that's a good point there and you can and you could push that over to the weekend so if you know you're going to have a weekend yeah. where um you're going out for a meal have a little look at the menu you know have a little idea of what you're going to go in and get you know yeah. You know, if you go to Wagamama's and get a chicken katsu curry, I know that's twelve hundred calories. But I know yeah. that, but I know the pad thai is six hundred. You know, if I'm trying to restrict my calories, those are both delicious dishes. Which one am I going to go for? Yeah, the katsu curry is probably the most popular dish in Wagamama's. It's twelve hundred yeah. calories. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, but even just knowing that information would be good because it gives you the chance then to try and make make those calories up or lose those calories and all their meals or all their days. Do you know what I mean? But just knowing that information, you yeah. know, it's often that like people go to They're going to have to, aren't they? Restaurants are going to have to put the calorie information yeah. on their menus now from, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. soon. Very soon. soon. I, yeah. think, I think most of them are doing it now. You can find Wagamama, Nando's. No, no, but they actually have to put it on the menus. I think they actually have to put it on the menus yeah. now rather than go on to fitness power and have, have the data yeah. there. So that's, that's really going to be really helpful. But let's say you're someone who likes to have a drink. Um, yeah. And you go to say, let's say Wagamama's, just because I know all the calories from all the things on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you go and you want a couple of beers, and you decide that you're going to have the Wagamama's and two beers, three beers, let's say that's two thousand calories. Then you've got the Duck Gyozas, that's another three hundred calories. And all of a sudden, because you haven't had a thought process on this, going back to the organisation, you haven't thought, I'm going out this week. I'm going there, I'll have a little look at the menu, I'll have a look at the typical calories for those meals. Oh, wow, that's a lot of calories. The minute I see something like that, because I think, oh, I'm going to go there and I'm going to have that, I did it just two weeks ago. I'm trying, uh, my calories are, uh, I'm trying to cut my calories. So I looked at the menu and I was like, I'll have a katsu curry, that's fine. I looked at it and I thought, naturally, I won't because that's so many calories. I'd rather have that and then I can have something else with it. And, and then make up the cal- much less calories. That comes down to having a look on my phone, checking what the calories are. It took me two seconds to do katsu curry, wagamamas, boom, there were the calories right there. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna have the pat thai. Okay, so these are the little tips you can do. Because yeah. uh, I find that these, like Jack said, these are the stumbling blocks when someone's so low on calories and they go on the weekend and they go out. They, we want you to go out but we also want you to can, you know, have an idea yeah. of what you're doing. Uh, yeah. 1,200 calorie meals are much harder to pull back than a 600 calorie meal. That's yeah. for me probably equally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know? um, I would say in terms of my, and where I would go, where I think people go wrong a lot of the time is that they don't have any start point. They have no idea where they're starting from. They don't have any information as to how much they're eating. They don't know what kind of foods, what kind of types, or uh, times that they're eating. When they pick out, they just have no information. It's like they don't know what they eat, even though you know, it's very simple. They just track it down. Like I know we all do it. We all ask for food diaries and stuff. And the problem with the half of the time when we ask for food diaries, the people change their food diary because they know that they're tracking it. So they... They feed us lies to begin with. So we then base our information off lies. But if you just were honest with yourself and actually just wrote down 
you see what food you're eating or took some pictures. It doesn't have to be. We've all got cameras now. I mean, we're good enough to put them up on Instagram. So why you couldn't take a photo every time you put something in your chops. And then just actually analyzing, being like, like what the hell am I eating? Like, what, what sort of times am I eating that? What kind of things am I drinking? And I'm sure, first of all, you would be shocked. But second of all, then it would be a very, very easy and less emotional scenario for you to just try and remove something from that. It doesn't always have to be, you know, let's get with a high protein, let's get with meals at this time, let's plan our snacks, you know. Just, you know, sometimes it can be just reduction in calories very mm. first because most of the time people need a result of if they need a result they back up why they're doing something they need to feel good about what they're doing because they're finding it really hard so we reduced the calories somehow and it made it really easy by oh shit i'm actually drinking seven cups of tea a day with sugar i'm going to reduce that down to two cups of tea with sugar that they all lose the extra calories and then you know i've actually lost some weight from that you yeah. know because i either stop some biscuits because you're having a biscuit with each cup of tea or whatever then that's amazing because you're getting a result and then I find with that, then you get more compliance further down the line. So somebody's made a small change, they get some changes themselves, and then they make another change, they get more. And then they're kind of at your door being like, what else can I do? What else could I change? And then you're you're down the route of, oh, actually, look, I notice you don't eat enough protein or yada, yada. But for me, it's the fundamental is that the amount of times I ask people, what are you eating now? And they're like, oh, I don't know. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what they had for breakfast. Yeah, yeah, you can't, they literally can't, and that's, and that's a funny thing as well, because you think, like, you know, I could, I, I could tell you what I had for breakfast for the last four weeks, but, yeah. like, we, we sort of clock our food, we look at our protein, we make sure that we have decent food, but some people just automatically eat, they just, you know, they, well, they, of course they automatically, but they, Unconscious, just about, they, they subconsciously, yeah. they're just eating food, they're not taking it in, it's just, a, a, just something that's happening, you know, I've seen people just struggle to be like, you know, right, you know, yesterday I had, oh, what did I ask? What did I have yesterday? All right. And I'm like, it was yesterday? It can't be that. Yeah, hard. no but, idea. Know, not that much of a choice, but they don't think about food at all. So just having that starting point of writing down and analyzing yourself, I'm sure that without a nutritional degree or any, any sort of nutritional information, you could see that foods are creeping in there. You could see there's common patterns that when you're overeating, it might be, after a certain period of time at night time, you're smashing down a load of food for no reason. Um, or in lunches, you just keep going to the, the shop and buying sweets or, you know, something that you're like, oh, I actually don't need that. That's, that's, that's a waste of time and money. So I think for me, it's just having a starting point because you, know, you can see such massive results with such minimal reduction. If, I always like to put it, if I had 10 Mars bar a day, and my, my weight was staying the same, and I just removed one of those Mars bars, I, I would lose weight. You know, essentially, I'm going to lose some weight because I've made a reduction in calories, and that's all that has to happen at the start sometimes. But I think people overcomplicate it. So they, you know, they may, oh, I have to do this diet system, I have to do that. And of course, it works for some people. Um, but yeah, that's what I think. I think um, the spin off from that, and in terms of when you were saying, in terms of people making changes, one of the other pitfalls is people making lots of choppy changes. So with the diets, they be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to cut out bread for two weeks. All right, take a cut of bread. And then they stop that, they bring bread back in, but then they chop something else. So actually, no, I'm going to cut out pasta. And then that's gone. And then it's like, actually, no, I'm cutting out potatoes. And then, <laughs> and then it's like, I'm on keto this week. Mm, try it for yeah. two weeks. No, no, I'm going to try yeah. carnivore now. And then chopping and changing, chopping and changing, chopping and changing. So there's just no consistency whatsoever. No chance for you to work out, one, what's actually going to work for you. Yeah. And two, for your body to be able to adapt to the slight change that you may make in order to yeah. see the progress. Well, you, you said it right there as well. It's just you, nobody gives themselves a chance to really actually see the progress because uh, that's a big fool. they make a half-assed chance. They're two weeks, two weeks, and that's when the changes are going to start happening. You know what I mean? They're going to yeah. start to happen after two weeks. Give me a month, and then if you really stop to not eat bread for a month, let's say, and you think that you're a bread. And I have a real thing about bread because I think people assume that they eat more than they do. Like, I eat a lot of bread. I mean, I eat a loaf a week now at the minute. I eat a full loaf of, what is it, 200 calorie per slice bread per week. Like, that's a lot of bread. That's a lot of calories in bread. 
but I would I don't see people eating slice upon slice upon slice. But I think that whole oh gluten's really bad for you or breads the bread makes you fat is sort of somewhere in people's minds. There's still a hangover, yeah. There's still a hangover. Yeah, it's just kind of in their mind. But yeah. but yeah, people don't give themselves any consistency. And I mean, if you want to run a marathon, like you don't you don't get to the stage where you're capable of running the marathon by running every four weeks once. Like you just it just isn't going to happen. Like your preparation is oh run this. I'm gonna I've got to run and clock up a certain amount of mileage every week for the next five months or whatever to get to this stage to be able to run that marathon. Do you know what I mean? You have to be doing it consistently and like anything, any skill, you don't you don't learn how to drive by doing two driving lessons. Yeah. You know, it just it just doesn't happen. It has these things have to happen consistently. Like so now that's a very good point. That they don't give themselves a chance. But I was going to say, like, what would um thing I struggle with is that people have um I think they're very emotionally connected with food. Yeah. They they solve their emotions with the endorphins that are released by food. You know, when that's like a lifetime of build up of you know families or something rewarding children with food instead of praise and love and whatever. So then they have the association with food brings happiness, brings joy. So when they're sad, they have food. When they're angry, they have food. When, they, you know, when they're happy, they have food. And just every emotion then becomes food is the soul, is the yeah. thing that makes everything better then. So yeah. what, would you, what, would your ma- what would your main tips be? You can give as many as you want for people who are emotional eaters. Well, I've got, I've got two, and, and actually, I find... I only want one, actually, okay. Josh. <laughs> well, I've got two, because I often find there's two different... Uh, certain people react slightly differently to the restrictions that you, you give them, and I shouldn't call them restrictions, but the changes that we make. And actually, some people need some. And I, I think I've spoken to you about this before, is where I've, if I take a food diary now, nowadays, a food diary that I get off someone is not for me to see how much they're eating anymore, I used to do it before that. And obviously there's a bit element of that, but the main reason I take to get someone to give me a food diary is I can see, right, here are the consistent foods. Here are the foods that this individual really likes. Um, and yeah, part of that might be due to, due to, you know, an emotional connection with, with food and it being comforting. So I might say to someone, look, let's reduce your calories here. Let's, let's sort this stuff out. That's not, that's non-consistent that this, uh, this stuff that you clearly really like, let's just leave that. Let's just curve that a minute, leave it alone. And let's change this stuff just here. So that's, um, that's one approach. Yeah. The other. Yeah, approach, well, what do you take out? You, so sorry, just to clarify, you're getting them to try and remove foods that they don't really care about. They're not first. really concerned about that. They don't go right. towards if they feel sad or happy or whatever. Yeah. Okay, right. Let's deal with the stuff that we can deal with that I know you can do. And often yeah. I will say, and I think you and I've talked about this before, Simon, is get them to the, I say, what can you, what can you change? What do you think on here you can change? Yeah. And if they're trying yeah. to reinforce that. You're decision. getting them, then the, the exactly. commit and then make the change themselves. Exactly. So then I'll say that, then I'll say, well, but this stuff I eat loads of, and that's fine. Let's, let's, let's forget about that for a minute. Just for a few weeks, let's see if we can start to get you, get you going. And like you said, Sai, what I'm banking on is that they start to lose weight and then they're highly motivated and go, all right, let me, let me see if we can deal with that. Uh, the second approach is for people, and they kind of tell me, they kind of come in and go, I just have to stop that stuff. I just have to. And I go, no, 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 let's see if we can leave it in. And they go, no, I just have to stop it. So then I give them a diet that's, you know, pretty clean um, inverted commas for anyone who's listening and not watching um, just because they, they want to hit it. They want to, they want to really make an effort. And then over the courses of those weeks, I try and slowly talk about introducing these, you know, type of foods that they eat a lot of, you know, yeah. you know, you, you mean like to- where they, they just are like over the top and they can't control, like, you know, some people have like textures like crisps or something they can't like, control. So they're, you would then try and remove them first so, and then try and reintroduce them yeah. and see how you deal with Yeah, well, we have an individual that comes into the gym, um, Simon, who, who says to us, doesn't she, every week, if I have one biscuit, mm. I'll have the whole packet. There's no yeah. point in me try, trying that approach because she knows yeah. if she has that one, she'll walk into the kitchen and have another one and she'll walk into the kitchen and come back with yeah. the whole pack. So with someone like her, there's no point doing anything like that. And actually what she's doing now is... Is, it's, it's a real, you know, it's 
meat and two veg with, yeah. a, with a little bit of carb. You know, she's just doing a normal diet without all the other snacky bits around it. But seeing well. results as well, though. Seeing results, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, which makes everything easier then. You see results and it makes all your choices because yeah. they're all hard at the start, aren't they? All your choices. So if you take away something somebody loves it, they don't really like that. But if they then get a result that they do really like and it makes them feel better, it replaces the, the endorphins come from the, the results rather than the food. Else, yeah. 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 What about that you, Jack? Gonna be, that was going to be my point, actually, working out how, how they feel when they have those foods. Because yeah. I've said it before in here and I've said it before, one of the elements of nutrition, people forget about it, is how it makes them feel. Yeah. One, emotionally, but then also how they feel in their day. Do they feel like they've got a lot of energy? Do they feel really tired? Do they feel yeah. good for their training session? So applying that aspect to a food diary can be really important because you yeah. can say, okay, around three o'clock, you smashed a packet of biscuits. What was going on there? Like, ah, oh, really tired, really, I was just like bored at work. So I smashed that, but like, right, okay. What's going wrong at lunch where you're feeling that, that hungry that you need to smash a packet of biscuits or with the breakfast and everything beforehand. So having that element of a food diary where people can write down how they feel around those meal times before and after at the time is super, important. it's more work, but it just takes that. It's like, it's an extra layer. It could be an extra change that you bring into someone's food diary without changing anything to do with their food. So oh, you can man. have it as a progression. So you have their normal food diary and then without changing a single aspect of their food, the progression after four weeks could be like, right, okay, if you've done normal food diary for however long, now all I want you to do is write how you feel around those meals. Yeah. And then for them, it could be a point where we're like, oh, okay, actually, yeah, around dinner time, around yeah. eight o'clock, two hours after it, I'm starving. Yeah. Like I need something. It's like, right, okay, well, why? Then you can yeah. go back after that. When they've made that connection, be like, okay, I'm actually really hungry then. There must be something wrong. Then you can go back with them and be like, okay, that's where we need to change something. This is where you, you need to have more protein, whatever it may be. Yeah. Mm. It's kind of like you're finding out the context and why they're eating it. So like they might have been rushed, so they didn't eat some breakfast, so then they killed it at lunch. Mm. So then you're like, all right, so why don't we try and fix it so we have breakfast prepared instead of you having that and leaving it up to that choice at lunchtime or something. Yeah. That's good, yeah. man. That's good. That is like that half a, how many times do we hear that with people then where they're like, again, you can write somebody's diary down and then you don't know what the situation you're like, well, that's shit, that's shit. But then if you see, see why they've done it, where they've been like, yeah, I actually missed food here or I, w I, I didn't prep food that night. So I barely had any for lunch. So then when I came to dinner, I'm starving. So then I ate my dinner and then I had ice cream and then I actually had some biscuits then after yada yada. And then you could be like, right. So the problem is not the biscuits in the, ice cream and all that, but it's the fact that you're not prepping lunch. Yeah. 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 And it ha makes our job easier because the changes yeah. normally happen m more smoothly because you can be refer back to their own words, their own notes and say, well, all right, well, you were feeling really tired around here. The change you need to make at lunch is this. If you yeah. want to carry on feeling like that, you can crack on and carry on feeling like that. But yeah. if you don't want to stop feeling, if you want to stop feeling like that, sorry, make these changes and then, guarantee you nine times ten of the time you won't feel like that and you'll feel better yeah and again it is then it's a change in their relationship with food and how they feel then going forward so you bring a more positive yeah every time they change the meal isn't it then exactly yeah yeah, yeah. like it mine's mine's would be but then this is only because i've actually i've actually done a little bit of reading on it recently um so it's in the forefront of my mind but um Having, having, it seems to be that having food prepped, not not necessarily prepped, but like having quick and easy, healthier options of food readily available for somebody who struggles with emotional eating, seems to be a lot handier because sometimes people don't just care about what they're eating, they, they just want to eat. Yeah. So, and then when they're at that point where they just want to eat, um, they can't be bored, they cook a meal, they can't be bored, they sit around and wait for it, they can't be bored, they think Easy about it. Yeah, they can't, exactly. So what are usually the easier options? Fast food, easy, uh, like microwave dinners, you know, just snacks in general. So usually really high calorie, low nutrient dense foods are the options that they eat them. I think they've done a study on it where they had, um, you know, a lot of people who suffered with emotional eating, they had always prepared a healthy snack there in a bowl ready for them 
and they always went and it, the higher percentage went with that healthier snack mm. just because it was there within distance of reaching. They didn't have to prep anything and they kept them on track for longer. Whereas the ones that didn't went down the route of just eat, went down the route of finding their cupboards for something that was immediate for consumption. So somebody who is a real emotional eater for me would be the, the you know, companies out there like the, the food prep companies. Um, <laughs> that might be a really good choice for him because let's put it this way is that people who struggle with emotional eating and generally who are overweight don't like cooking as much. And that's a generalization. Obviously there's a lot of other people that do, but you know, they don't like the thought of cooking, you know, like the preparation time, you don't do, they just generally don't like that process. They just want the enjoyment from the eating. So if you, if they went to a company who prepped food for them and they were able to select meals and they were just there and it was a matter of, I'll oh, stick that in the microwave, bang at me off for 10 minutes. That'll give you everything you need. That then could solve a lot of their issues for the time being. Obviously, then further down the line, you can results come. You can start making more uh, changes in there to make their life a lot easier, possibly a lot cheaper. But yeah, I think that uh, for me, that's something I would. And this is only because I've been reading about it recently. Making food readily available that is a healthier options, even if it's snacky stuff, but it's lower on calories. Um, it just means that it gives them less chance to mess up that day. Yeah. I mean, you're competing with the ease of something like a delivery or a just eat. Yeah. The only way you can do that is having something ready, yeah. like immediately done where you literally yeah. have to do nothing. Because it's yeah. so yeah. quick, all those yeah. things. It's 20 minutes. Yeah. It's yeah. Five, yeah, five taps of a button, you can have your food waiting. Yeah. yeah. And while you're yeah. sitting there watching TV. Yeah, yeah. you have to literally have to, have to get yeah. up. You have to move. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, um, I want to. Um, Something I think about as well is, um, do people know when they're full up and when they're actually hungry? You know, because yeah. I think I think I think that's another thing that because um, how many times you mentioned it just a second ago, Jack, when um, people have had their dinner and an hour and a half, two hours later, night time, they're like, well, I'm hungry now. Sh shouldn't be starving mm. an hour or two after after you've eaten. You know, and and is it is it you go is it? It's understanding is. Are you going, oh, I'm actually hungry, or there's a break now, and well, what shall I do? I'm a bit, I'm a bit bored here. Well, was, so, you know, that's, a, that's, yeah. a, that's another thing. Again, going back to your, why did you eat it? Why did you go and eat a biscuit then? You know, it could be, well, no, I had a high protein. I had lots of veggies with my, with my dinner. It was a high, you know, so it was a, you know, highly fibrous and everything like that. So it should have satisfied me. So again, asking your, the question that you were saying, Jack, why did you feel the need to do that then? Um, oh, I felt hungry. Did you? Why don't you try going for a walk? I don't know. It could be um, a glass of water or something. You know, at that point, we, we've heard that one a lot often, haven't we? Go and have a big glass of water. See if you're still hungry after five minutes. I like getting people to do their activity at that time. You know, if I've given them something to do, you know, like, you know, just some stretches or some homework, I like, I like saying, right, at that point there, why don't you do that right then? At the point where you're like, well, because you're going to get up to go to the kitchen and open the fridge anyway. So why don't you get up and just go to your floor and do the exercises and stretches that I give you. See how you feel then. Then have a glass of water. See how you feel then. You know, it's, more hungry. Yeah, more hungry. Yeah. <laughs> if you're more hungry, then you're hungry, right? You know, yeah. it's, so um, I think trying to find understanding whether you're actually hungry or whether yeah. you're just bored is another way of, um, of we're figuring out. And those are a couple of tips. Do an activity you know, um, drink a big glass of water. Those are a couple of things that you can do to, to you know, kind of test it, you know. Um. I think a big part of it as well is just, it's habit in the yeah. sense of, especially when you, especially like evening time, where yeah. you've had your dinner and you maybe, you have a specific show you watch and you've always gone in the first ad break, oh, I'll have my tea then. I'll yeah. have my cup of tea then and a biscuit. Yeah. Like, it's always like then, then as soon as you're in that time, your body knows it's coming, especially if you do it, over and over again. So if you've yeah. been doing it for years or whatever, where you know in this ad break or in the ad break, you get up, you have a little biscuit. That's a habit mm. now. Yeah. So then your body's waiting for it. Your body's like, it's excited. Time. It's excited by it's it. Yeah. 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 It's right. 8 15. Yeah. <laughs> the advert for bloody like new rolls on. We need to go get our biscuit. <laughs> uh, it will know. And so just breaking that habit where you could either combine it where, like you say, do it, create a different habit where you said you do some foam rolling, whatever it is, for those three minutes. Yeah. Or you combine what Simon said with having food readily available. 
lower calories. Have, yeah. a, have a different snack. Have a completely different yeah. snack ready. So you can still have that. So you still have that little habit, that little routine, but it's a completely different snack and it's different. Yeah. It's so funny, man, with a habit thing because, you know, I always, I always I always laugh when people don't like breakfast, and it's only because I eat breakfast and I love it so much. Like, but I laugh and they're like, "Oh, I just can't eat breakfast in the morning." So I'm like, "I know I said it before. Everybody in this in this Western world started off life by eating three meals a day. Yeah. We yeah. all ate breakfast. We all got it before school. It was only the fact that then, as we got older, we started either getting up late for work, we started sleeping in for afternoons." We started, you know, we just changed our daily routine where we didn't have breakfast. And then, you know, we do that for a year at a new job. All of a sudden, you don't really feel peckish in the morning because you've just created this whole thing where you don't feel. But we all started from the same cloth of eating our breakfast. Our parents all make sure that we had our breakfast. That was the main thing you did before you let your kids go to school. So yes. somewhere in our life, we just changed that habit. So you can unchange anything. You can yeah, change all true. habits and they're like, you can, you can switch them. It's just a matter of being determined and slowly reintroducing. Um, with a breakfast thing, we've, I've done it with so many people and then they're starving when it gets in the morning thing. Yeah. I mean, they, they end up getting, becoming really hungry and, and then it stops them then eating loads more later on. But also with you, George, with the, or um, I think Jack, was it Jack or George saying about them feeling hungry? Yeah. You're in a deficit. If you're truly dieting, you're, you're in a deficit of calories. Yeah, there's going to be hunger times, isn't there? Yeah, yeah we know you've that. got to get used to some sort of hunger at some point in the day. Do you know what I mean? You've got to get used to it. There might be, but it's given into the hunger and then it's taking control of it. You've got that choice where you're being like, right, cool. I know lunch is coming in an hour's time. I am hungry now. Am I going to die? No, that's a definite no. <laughs> not, from like, not from that not from that anyway might, yeah, might yeah, yeah. That. you might die from all our stuff obviously <laughs> yeah, like that too. Yeah. but do you know what I mean like it won't be it. and you know we you find that busy people don't really think about food that much I'm sure mm. that when we've had days where we've had five or six PTs back to back we're starving but there ain't nothing we can do about it so you just forget about it I forgot to eat yeah. sometimes I forget I'm like oh crap I didn't yeah. eat my lunch yeah you're too busy but it's when you have nothing to do that you know then you're just sat around yeah. No, not really hungry. But again, when you're in the deficit, and I've had this before where people have said, like, no, I am finding myself, I am hungry now. And I'm like, yeah, 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 no, no, that's cool. Like, you know, as long as you're not starving, like, you're not, but remember, we're trying to lose weight here, which means you're eating less than your body's burning. So as long as the hunger's not out of control, we got to learn when the right time is to eat here. And if it's just not happening for you, then we really, really got to look at what's in your meals. Yeah. Because there's going to be satiation happening from certain meals and there's going to be some foods that you eat that don't give you that satiety. Therefore, it's going to make you hungry quicker. And that's a good lesson for somebody then eventually down the road because they're like, right, I'm eating the same, same amount of food or same amount of calories but different food and I'm feeling fuller for longer. Then in their head, they, they've changed the habit and they'll be like, ah, that, that stuff's nice, but I'm starving. You know, if I eat that early, it's been hungry in a minute. Yeah. And then eventually you just don't find them food, foods as quality anymore because they know that it just means that they're going to eat more later on in the day. Yeah, so yeah. Just, it's going to make yeah. by appreciation. Like. Yeah, I mean, I, man, I don't know how people don't eat breakfast. Like, I, I go to sleep excited about breakfast. Man, I don't care what time I get up in the day. If I get up at three in the morning, it's breakfast time. Yeah. As long as I've been asleep, it's breakfast. Yeah. And I, in my head, I'm like, I'm, at night time before bed, I'm like, right, I'll either have this, this, or this. I know it depends how, what time I get up, but one of those things are going to be eaten. Sometimes if I'm up early enough, I'll have both of them. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's times where I'll, I'll have porridge and I'll have eggs because I've got time yeah. to do it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll get the calories later. You see? Yeah. 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 Any more? Have you ever had breakfast at a really weird time, like a like at a four a.m. breakfast or three thirty? I'm, I'm doing morning? that. I'm doing that every day, mate. I'm training at five in the morning every day at the moment. So yeah. I'm eating breakfast at like four, and it's lovely. It's so quiet. Yeah. It's quiet yeah. and nice. Well, what it means, Jack, is that um, I don't have to train on my lunch, and I can just sit there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, if if I choose to, sometimes I just sit there with my arms folded, just like. Just like this. Yeah, can, this is in fine. The corner of the yeah. Gym. yeah. Once I've watched all the NFL highlights for the week, um, uh, then I'm just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sit here. This is, this, Jack, this is coming from the guy that Stu told me when he walked in the room 
and there's somebody air charges in the corner playing his harmonica <laughs> on his own. Like, it was in harmonica. Uh, oh, uh, not, not, not very well. It was in my pocket. Oh, okay. And I, 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 brought a different, <laughs> I, I brought a different hoodie into work. And like, I was like, oh, what's this? Oh, it's the harmonica. And I just, I just blew it and then Stu, he was like, what are you doing? I was like, nothing. Yeah, well, I'm in Westland. Yeah, I was just, you know, it was a microphone. I was just blowing um, into a microphone. I want to go on. I want to just finish up because we haven't got much time, I suppose. But what question? So um, I said it before there, hedonic eating. Hedonic eating is something like I learned this from Phil Lerney, just the word, really. And it sounds cool, obviously, if I say it all the time anybody's got hedonic foods but hedonic foods or hedonic eating is when you just eat something and you can't possibly put it down i'm sure everybody's got a type of food and when they put it in their mouth it fills their body with joy and they can't put it down <laughs> when they, let me repeat that again when they put it in their mouth it fills their body with joy all right you can take that as you want yeah but hedonic so, what <laughs> what would be what is your one food that you cannot stop once you pop? Nutella. Oh, uh, Nutella. Yeah, I don't. The, yeah. the kids are having it on the weekends. I've not bothered of late because if I have one spoonful, I'll end up like eating like five, six, seven spoonfuls, thinking I better stop, otherwise I'll eat all the kids Nutella <laughs> and I'll have to go and buy some more <laughs> Nutella. You know, it's like basically on a diet. Yeah, it opens the gates, man. Like, I, just, I have yeah. one, I'm just like, oh. oh. I, just, I just start digging in, and it's like 80 calories per teaspoon. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you have, one, you have one 20 times a day where you just be like, oh, just one more. Yeah. One more yeah. Or, or I have one teaspoon, but I'll dig it all the way in. Boom. As much <laughs> as I can. I'm just like, ah, right in. Yeah. Do, you ever, do you ever have it just on, like, plain white bread? Always. Your white white bread folded over Hold so it's like don't, extra thick of chocolate spread. Toast it on don't, a on a sesame seed bagel is oh, incredible. Oh, stop, it. stop it! Stop it! Stop. Yeah. Jack, my mum, my mum used to murder like, and I always stop. used to blame used my to brother, but I caught her. Used to murder people, <laughs> but you stop that now. Yeah, good. Um, good. No, but you used to, you used to get the little jars that were like they turned into glasses. Yeah, after I you got loads like of those. Oh yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Every like my mom buy a jar of that and within a day it's gone. Yeah. Like and then I caught her, it was her, she used to just eat it with a spoon like yeah. thing, just paint <laughs> it. And, like all the boys looking for chocolate spread on bread and she's yeah. nailed that thing like. To be honest, I'm I'm in I'm in your mum's camp with that one because I like it on, on toast and everything. I like it on anything. Anything. So I, I put, put it in porridge. I put, I put it, it on in porridge. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, <laughs> yeah. I I prefer it on its own with a spoon. Yeah, because it it's, it's just yeah. pure dense chocolate. I'm I'm convinced in one sitting I could eat two tubs of the standard size. Yeah. Oh, easy. Oh, man, have yeah. you had the Have you had white chocolate hazelnut spread? I just invite you say that there now. From te- my my flatmate made. What did she make? She made Kinder Bueno brownies with oh. that involved in it, and. No, blondies, not brownies, blondies. Yeah, blondies. Yeah. The, the white chocolate yeah, hazelnut yeah. spread was involved. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> well, then, Jack, over that point. Would, so would that be yours then, Jack? What would yours be? No, no. What would be, what, mine is, a, um, you know, in Tesco, you've got the bakery, Tesco bakery. Yeah. yeah. Um, where they make like the little packets of cookies and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the pack of five chocolate chip shortbread. Yeah. Oh, nice. Five, five, Five isn't enough. I can just <laughs> eat, eat six packets of those. I could just sit there and eat them. Just, yeah, just yeah. Oh, yeah. They're oh, unbelievable. Wow. I don't know why those ones specifically, but uh, they're unbelievable. And the tactic yeah, to get around that is, people, is don't even have one. Don't even have a bite. Yeah, exactly. Have a bite of that. Oh, that's that. It. Say it again, sorry, Simon, the word? Hedonic. If you have one bite of your hedonic food, you will eat all of it. Yeah, it's just going to happen. So just, so, just don't, so just don't have it. Um, they're a good shout though, man. They are a good shout. So good. What's yours? Mine's, man, mine's is the most boring thing in the can world. I, can, I, can I guess it? Can I guess it? Yeah, go for it. Cereal. Cereal, cereal man. Yeah. <laughs> it's any cereal. Yeah. I cannot, I cannot Do you have one? Do you have cereal? one cereal? Um, recently, I've got cinnamon, uh, curiously Ooh, cinnamon. Yes, oh, right. yeah. That's, good, good. Good. that's yeah. a pack. That's a pack on them one day. That's like, I just cannot control that because I'll eat them dry. I'll eat them in yeah. milk. It doesn't matter. They're like crisp mm-hmm. about milk. They're in milk. They're glorious. So like yeah. I just smash that down. But like 
it's it's uncontrollable. Like I started buying started using a mixing bowl for a cereal bowl to stop myself <laughs> going back and having multiple bowls because it's too much effort. So I use a mixing bowl. bowl. <laughs> yeah. And then I blend them together. I can blend Rice Krispies, seriously, cinnamon, everything, just all in the one and eat the whole yolk like. Yeah. Yeah. But you- recently, recently, ice cream is in there as well, man. Yeah. Ice cream. Ice cream. A little pubs. Yeah, I can stop with ice cream. But- yeah, I, I can stop with ice cream, but I do like it as well. Joe, you know, another one for me is um, double cream, man. I no, could, just double cream. I could drink that stuff. Yeah. I could drink that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't. But I could like when I pour it on like the cakes that I have. Often I'll like just start. Spooning. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, what are you doing? Nothing. Actually, take it back to the yeah, fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just yeah. Just yeah. have the cream. That's so dense in calories as well. That man. Um, there is. A, I would have thought yogurts for you, man, because you you went for a whole yogurt phase. I'm still like doing that. the yogurt thing, but I can control the yogurt. So if I have mm. a tub of scare, the little ones, yeah. and then, or I'll have like half the tub of the Onkin yogurt, the nice tasty, yeah. you know, but like, I don't need to then be like, oh God, I'll eat all of it. Whereas with Nutella, I'll just, I'll just, I'll eat it all. So there's, there's yeah. no, there's no point. But people going like, even with those hedonic foods, then, man, it, it is a case of, and it really is a case of avoid. If I'm on a diet, there's yeah. no point in buying those types of cereals. There's just no point because it's such a battle such yeah. a battle mentally they just be like right i gotta not eat that like or i might have i think i was i find myself in tesco's when i was dieting over the summer and i had i had a thousand calories worth of snacks right because i was telling you i saving them all so a thousand calories and then george is like why don't you just go and get um why don't you go get cereal and i was like well oh, i don't know if that's enough calories for cereal so i went they go i went they look at you think a thousand calories a lot of cereal but curiously cinnamon and the amount so, I have, it's really not. Like, that's like, okay. it's like one and a half of my bowls. And I was like, George, if I want cereal, I want four bowls. At least yeah. I'm yeah. so hungry now, now I want yeah. four. So I just didn't buy it. I went and bought something else. I didn't care that much about it. It was tasty, just as good, but it fit the calories because, you know what I mean? There's nobody stopping me with that milk and that cereal. There's yeah, 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 there's, yeah, yeah. Just avoid at all costs with certain foods, man. Yeah. Do you remember Golden Grahams? remember them they're still going yeah but i know i've just haven't had them for a while so i, I oh, assume yeah. in my head when i stop having things they just don't yeah. they just don't. i've just had the worst experience of my life do you remember sugar puffs oh sugar yeah. puffs were amazing yeah, I never really, so, yeah. Sugar oh, sugar puffs. Puffs. really good nice and tasty i bought what i thought was sugar puffs it was just puffs uh, like really, they're quite bitter. They're not sweet at all. Um, or anything, it was like eating cardboard puffed up. I, I was like, I was running out and I was ready to go somewhere, and I thought, oh, smash a bowl of these quickly. Now I haven't had sugar puffs in years. I was just like eating milk and cardboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so disappointing. Do you put honey? And you can't put sugar on it. You can't put honey on it because it's like it's not covered every once. So. No, yeah, you, you hit the top layer, then you have to add more honey. And then, anyway, this is about a healthy podcast, not, oh, yeah. <laughs> not tactics on how much calories you but can But avoid, avoid, avoid hedonic foods. Avoid if you can, hedonic. I think that's a good, it's a good diet and um, practice. If you can figure out the foods that are the most yeah. hedonic type of food. And I learn find, I think sometimes like, um, like crisps, you can find, you know, the pop chips, which are literally the half the calories of actual like kettle yeah. chip or yeah. any yeah. of it. Like, if you can find a replacement, you know, ice cream, you go for the hollow top or some version that's half, again, 300 calories a tub versus 1,000. I wonder if there's You're like going a, to set yourself on a good bed there. I wonder if there's a chocolate spread lower calorie version. Probably. There is. Is, they, they do, they do like them zero calorie, you know, the box. Yeah, there, there is one. Stuff. Yeah. I don't Not know what, I've never tried them. Never tried them. I might have to try it just to see if I can satisfy that urge, actually. Chocolate, I find chocolate's a hard thing to imitate if there's no sugar yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It tastes plastic. Yeah. Uh, anyway, well, gentlemen, I think that's enough, uh, as much time as we have today. Uh, yeah. Thank you for hosting, Simon. It was excellent. Later. Yeah. Um, Later. Same time next week. Yeah. We didn't, get, we didn't get the myth busting in today, so we'll do that early next time. Yeah. Oh, that, and the myth buster is that curiously cinnamon grains don't have any calories. Don't have any calories, yeah. <laughs> yeah, eat them all, eh? Myth them busted. All. Yeah, myth busted. Simon, I'll see you tomorrow. See you next week, yeah. Jack. See you, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.